Well, I'm glad uh, to be here, and I'm also glad that um, I've got some consults here, uh, a couple of the doctors, so if I get uh, off the track, they can straighten me out. And I know there's some people here that know a lot more about computers. Um, I'm at a disadvantage for this particular program because I don't have an Apple Watch. Somebody gave me a nice watch a few years ago. I never saw the need to get an Apple Watch. And so a lot of uh, input for healthcare is coming from the Apple Watch. And if you are using that, I hope that you would speak up at the appropriate times and uh, share your impressions of that with all of us because I have absolutely no <coughs> No experience of that. Um, today we're going to talk about emergency information on the iPhone, uh, how we put it there, uh, how we access it. Uh, we're talking about the health application of uh, Apple. And I want to spend a little time talking about the medical record. The medical record is kind of an interesting thing. And uh, those of us here in the medical profession have gone through all kinds of medical records over our history. And I'm, I'm just going to share a little bit of that with you. Uh, then we're going to talk about Apple's foray into the uh, health data storage, which is new in January this year. And uh, just a recommendation or two as to where I think you can get reliable information of the medical uh, medical information on the internet. And then I've got a, a pearl at the end of that. Now we're going to go first to the iPhone where we can uh, look at this emergency information that's on the iPhone. And I, I wanted to start this up with my iPhone turned off so we can get to that uh, emergency information. It's, I'm just starting on my phone, so hopefully <clears throat> in just a moment we'll have that. How many of you have your emergency information filled out on your phone? Is that the ICE? I'm sorry? Is that ICE? ICE? It's the NAPR name for Well, I don't know. Emergency oh, contact. No. 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 Well, that, this, you see this in the, little, in the corner of your, uh, oh, shucks. <laughs> I am sorry. Who's that guy? Oh, I don't know. He's a guy on the street in uh, St. Augustine. It wasn't me. Oh, I thought it was you. He's got a cute girl there, though, doesn't he? Yep. That's his wife. <laughs> I automatically, automatically go to the... Uh, home button and, and I didn't want to do that so we could access the, uh, <clears throat> well this emergency in the lower corner of your iPhone, if you have that filled out and someday you're unconscious and wind up in the emergency department, uh, this is where they're going to look first to find out something about you. Uh, I think it's just a wonderful thing that they have put on the iPhone. I'm going to touch this. The first thing that comes up is a keypad. And I tried to call my home number with this keypad. It won't work. So I called the police department and said, I'm going to call you on 911 and just to check and see if this will work. And sure enough, <clears throat> it rang through on 911. And they answered, uh, what is your emergency? Um, so if you are in a situation where you don't have your phone, where you don't have your phone and uh, somebody goes down, you can pick up and grab their phone, even though you don't know their access, and find their, um, and make an emergency call. 
And I think most of us may not have been aware of that. Now, the medical ID is an area where you can put your data, and I'm just scanning through that, but you can put your uh, diagnoses, your past medical history, your current medicines, your uh, blood type, and then you can put your emergency contacts in there. So if you're unconscious, we know who to call uh, to find out a little more about you. I think there's one piece of information that would be very helpful on here to be able for you to put your primary care doctor uh, in there and his phone number so we could then call him and get you admitted or uh, find out more about you. So that is the access to that information. We'll talk about how it gets there in just a little bit. Bill? Yes. Um, how do I get that screen on an iPhone 10? You know? Yeah. No. Push the side button. Yeah, it pops up on the cable. You have to be if you, if you go to health, the health app, mm -hmm. it'll take you there. Okay, so you have to actually from, get No, no, no. From the, from the lock screen, you push the side button, the right button, multiple times. I think it's five times. Well, it's a lot. It's like we're going to sign off our oh. office. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> in addition, uh, you can make an emergency call yourself by pushing your um, side button, not the volume button, but if you push it five times, as you were describing for ten, uh, on the 8th, you can push it five times and it will make the emergency call for you if you have that set up. What I did was I just pretended that I was about to shut it off and that screen, that screen came up. Okay. So the side button on the left and the, and the side button on the right, press them together and that screen comes up. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, this is down here in the left lower quadrant with the heart is the... Uh, health uh, uh, application that uh, Apple has provided us. And this has been on the um, phone for several years, although in January they have just updated the uh, health records information. There are four areas of this program. One is today. And since I haven't done anything today, this is yesterday. It shows you how many steps you've done, how far you have walked, and if you've got some device that will put whatever you select, in this case, heart rate, blood pressure. I did this manually because I don't have a device like the watch. Uh, it will be loaded on here automatically. Interestingly, if you have not looked at this before and haven't played with it, it is recorded on your phone unless you've turned it off. So you can see now how lazy you have been. Uh, you can go, for instance, let's take uh, steps. And you tap, you tap on steps, and this shows the steps that I did yesterday on a per hour basis. And you can see when I did a walk in the morning yesterday. You can go to the week, to the month, and to the day, I'm sorry, to the year, and see what your activity has been. And um, this uh, iPhone, even if you have it turned off, or if your battery is dead, will record your steps as long as you have it on your person. Now the accuracy of this is certainly not 100%. It's going to vary with your stride. It's going to vary with where you put it. Uh, my wife complains about hers when we take walks together. Uh, hers does not go as far as mine does, but mine's in my pocket and hers is in her purse. And so the motion 
is different, and the, and the phone is recording that motion, and so she's not getting as much motion as, as in my pocket, and apparently. Uh, yes? To me, there seems to be a catch-22. I need to use my passcode in order to get into the phone. And if I want to give this health information, or someone needs this health information, unless I'm able to get into the phone, they're locked out. How do I overcome that? Well, that's the point I was making. You don't need the passcode to get into the emergency data. That's a separate. That was accessible from your initial screen when you power up the phone. No, it doesn't have to be. It just you mean from the off, from it being turned off? Yes. It locks. does not have to be if you want to access it when it's otherwise, you know, just press the home button if you have an older phone. But it it does not have to start from being off. Well you just don't if you have like mine is an iPhone six, I don't want to press it with my normal finger because it would turn on. I press it with a different finger several times. And you get the screen that you were that you showed. Oh well, thank you. I, I, I was troubled by that. Yes. So you're basically saying, from an off phone, you can have emergency people can get to that. Yes. But that's separate from going into this app. Yes. This is different. We've gone yeah. beyond that. You, you choose what's out there. Right. We're going. We're going to look at the uh, the data that's on that initial page comes from this health application. We'll go to that here in a minute. So <clears throat> those of you who have not looked at this before, you can go back and see how active you have not been. <laughs> uh, and then <clears throat> there are four quadrants here. As I look at the health uh, data portion of this, one of them deals with activity, and it's much the same as I, I talked about. <coughs> Uh, it shows your activity, and somehow this thing can determine when you go up a flight of steps. It's not 100% accurate, and I have read that the iPhone tends to be about uh, within 10% of being accurate, which is good enough for most of us, you know, for the kind of information we're wanting. It's certainly not... Uh, data for a, a study, but it's certainly good enough to keep us moving. What is really nice, I think, is, is the iPhone, or the iWatch, which will display parameters of what your goals are and see on, as the day goes on with those concentric circles, how far you are to meeting your goals. So it's a constant reminder for you to stand up or to move or drink water or whatever else. Uh, it has this session on mindfulness. Now, what is mindfulness? Well, we spend a busy life. We're running here, running there. We're stressed by phone calls, whatever. And it's just kind of nice to be able to, once in a while, uh, relax and reflect and be calm. And I should mention that all of these quadrants have, uh, I'll show you, have a bunch of uh, uh, applications that it recommends. And in this case, calm is one of these applications that will recommend, and you can, Go to this software and, and put on this uh, music or the picture and uh, come up with uh, a, a means of uh, kind of dealing with the frustrations of the day and relaxing just a little bit. So Bill, you're using an expert, one of the external apps there? This is Calm, which is an external app for mind. Uh, Sorry? That's this music. That's the music in there. That's your, yeah, that's your choice. That's this music here. Now, this music wouldn't appeal to me to get calm. 
<laughs> it would drive me crazy after a while. But I'm just showing you that there are, are different uh, choices in this particular program. Bill? Yes. Is it a choice out of their selections already? Or can yeah. I put my own music? Well, I think for, for using, I don't know that, George. Uh, there are so many different uh, programs here that are options to use. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that if I can get back. Well, I guess I have to go oh, back and ask time. All right. So that is mindfulness in the right upper co corner. We're going to go down and look at sleep. Uh, sleep is another um, thing, and this, will, this is kind of interesting. Uh, the, if you look down here, you see these recommended applications? Mm -hmm. These are applications that they suggest um, you might want to consider. And, in case, in, as I've read, most of these deal with what time you should go to sleep, what time you want to wake up, to make sure you get an adequate seven to eight hours of sleep. And probably the most important thing in all of that is doing uh, this on a consistent basis. If you go to sleep every night at 10 o'clock, and wake up at 6 o'clock, you're going to do very well. But we're guilty of going out and we get home at 11 and we're watching the news until 12 and, and then we're up at 5. And, uh, so the inconsistencies of our lives is pretty trying on our sleep cycles. And I think as, as I have read at this, um, most of these things uh, really deal a lot with recording what you're doing as well as being consistent. Yes? What is the position or the connection of the phone to your body in order to get these recordings? The position? Yes. Is, is there any of you lying on it or you sit beside <coughs> you? Or how, oh, how no, you? You're, you're just listening to the music. Uh, what I was showing you there is is more of a uh, it takes data from the watch and your activity mm -hmm. to determine this guy's asleep. It actually, some of these programs actually record noise from your sleep. So uh, it, I think it mostly comes from the watch. There, there's, I don't, I've never tried it, but there's one app that you have your phone on, in bed with you, and it actually not monitors how much tossing around you do and gives you a, a sense of how thoroughly you're sleeping. I don't know which one it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, in, that, in that case, the phone is, in, is laying next to your pillow. That's my, mm -hmm. that's my solution. I want you to listen to this. This is part of the mindful travel to the south of France. This, I tried this the other night. And I'll be your guy. It's a story. And, uh, Lazily through the lavender fields. It lasts 20 minutes. Sleepy villages of Provence. Did you stay awake 20 minutes? No. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is this there's several stories on here that you put your phone beside you or next on the next to the bed. You will smell it. And you listen to this story and drift off. I mean, have to use headphones and my wife would start screaming. <laughs> Well, she might go to sleep, George. You'd be okay. Instantly. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the nutrition portion of this. And again, here are all kinds of recommended applications. Tired of that? You guys are going to sleep on it. Perhaps the. Okay. Um, so these are the applications that are recommended for this. This looks to me, and I don't have real experience with this, like it's a big job. 
but it's very beneficial. And because you have to enter in, I've eaten uh, chocolate ice cream and apple pie and <laughs> all these things, which have, of course, the information of the cal caloric intake. Some of these programs are very good because they, they will match caloric input with caloric output with exercise. So some of these programs will integrate. And you'd have to, you'd have to spend considerable time, I think, in going through all these to find one that really fits your bill. But you'd have to be disciplined to enter the data for the caloric in, intake in order to have uh, the nutrition. And so, what Apple is saying here that with adequate activity, a good mental health of mindfulness, a good nutritional intake, good sleep, you're going to be uh, in much better health. And indeed, they're correct. Now, down here, you can put in body measurements. This is the area of health records. And I want to show you something here that's quite interesting. Apple, when they made this uh, commitment, or they announced it in January of this year, they had about 12 uh, locations that were already signed up and apparently available for you to download the, their, your health records onto your iPhone. Now, I want to show you, just look at these. Look how many of these there are. So they've gone from 12 to this number in January. Now, I, I went through these about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, and there was nothing in Southwest Florida at that time. But I, I can see from looking at, at this, it isn't going to be long before we have uh, access to uh, our health records that are going to be uh, <coughs> available to download on our iPhone. Where did you see that list? Okay, if you if you go back to this page right there, go down here below, you see the health records, mm -hmm. and then you look at Get Started. Uh -huh. Click that and that will load those for you. Uh, and, you know, these other things, heart rates, uh, Apple is working very hard on trying to get a uh, determination of glucose from the skin. And it's a very difficult uh, thing to do, apparently, because they have not been successful. A lot of people are looking at that, because that would be just wonderful for the diabetics. I mean, think about it. You, you know, if you're diabetic, and you've got your watch on, and here you get an alarm anytime your blood sugar goes below 50. That would keep you out of trouble. Yes? I, like you, was never convinced on the value of the Apple Watch, but that single thing alone would be enough to make me decide about it. It would, certainly. Mm -hmm. If you were a diabetic, that would be. Now, they don't have the solution yet. But I know they've hired some pretty high, high dollar people uh, in order to try and solve that. Well, aren't they already measuring cardiac activity? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, they're, they're measuring uh, uh, yeah, rhythms and heart rates, and uh, they're doing that from the skin. Well, I want to go back to the iPad here for a little bit. <clears throat> Bill, I have a question. Yes. In the, in the uh, selections for falling asleep, the musical selections and the story, are they all timed? Uh, the one I was listening to is timed. But, but if I were to pick a musical selection from that, would it be... 20, this one was 20 minutes. They're all 20 minutes? Okay. I good. don't know if they all are or not. But, but are they all timed? Are they all yeah. set to go off? Right. Because I use music to go to sleep, but I, 
I have the additional step of having to go into the clock and set the timer. And sometimes when I go through that process, it's enough to wake me up. <laughs> so if I knew, so if I knew that there, it was already preset for a block, you wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Thanks. Uh, one question. Yes. When you talk about medical records, the thing that comes on the screen is privacy. I yes. am not trying to assess the medical records from a doctor's office. The complete record I get is your next appointment is no more information. Yeah. So when I access medical records here from the hospital, do I get my next appointment or do I get some real information? We're going to talk about that. Very good. <clears throat> we have the phone, and when we go into the, the app like to check the blood pressure or something like that, it doesn't have any ability to record it. You, is there a better app that we could use for that information? A better app to record the blood pressure and all that. Oh, well, there's, there's all kinds of choices. But have you used one of them? No. I, I've used the health app and you can enter it. You just push the little button. Right. But does it record your heart, heartbeat? No, it doesn't. Well, does you, do you have a watch? No, no. It's just the it's phone. phone. No, no it, your phone will not. You'd have to take your heart rate and then enter it manually. Like if his heart goes low, it won't say anything unless he has no. a watch. Right. Okay. But there are apps that work with certain blood pressure measuring devices <coughs> and uh, record it when you when you measure the blood pressure. Okay. So as I mentioned, you know, Apple has been very interested in uh, healthcare all along the way, um, uh, and to enable the uh, disabled to have uh, a, a, a solution for their disability. I, uh, a year ago, had some neurosurgery and wound up with a, a hand here that doesn't do right. So my typing is gone. Well, Apple's got a wonderful dictation program built right into it. And so I uh, am able to uh, it takes some editing after you get done with it, but it's it's much easier than hunt and peck. Um, so Apple announced in April, uh, sorry, in January, about this personal health record feature, uh, which uh, is called Health Records. And what this will do, um, it will aggregate uh, your patient generated data in the health application um, and from a user's electronic medical record if the user is either a patient or a participating hospital and with this data then it will consolidate this information in a, a practical way and what they have done they have uh, used this FL7 uh, FHIR, which is Fast Healthcare Interop Interoperability Resource. And what this allows them to do is to have a common connection between your provider and you. And that's been the big problem. I have a friend who is a ophthalmologist here in town. I was trying to get some information about the uh, connections between hospitals and offices. How, how, how well this medical record is, is doing. And he said, well, we dev devised our own. And we've got a wonderful one for ophthalmology. I said, are you connected to anybody? No. Would you consider doing that? No. It works for us, and that's all we need. And the point is, somehow we're going to have to talk to each other. And this has been a, this is a connection that's been agreed upon by the powers that be, and Apple 
started with this appropriately rather than trying to build a their own system and it apparently is uh, cost effective it's reasonably priced so you can you know a smaller uh, provider could could uh, use that Apple acquired glimpse glimpse which is a small health data startup and they had a head start on uh, a plan to get rid of this issue that you were bringing up about HIPAA. HIPAA is a, what you sign, you know, it's, it's a protection for your data so that nobody else can access your data. If I'm working in the hospital and I hear my neighbor has been in the, in the hospital, and I go to the computer and look that my neighbor's data up, I have committed uh, a breach, and that's inappropriate. If I'm taking care of my neighbor, and I need his data to take care of him, that's okay. So it's, it's very uh, appropriate to have this data protected as, as we go forward here. And so a Glimpse apparently had this solved, and uh, so they bought, they just bought them, and uh, now then they'll have an AI, artificial intelligence engine that will read the medical records, uh, break out the codes in a standardized way, and then they will have uh, the data presented, as we'll see in a little bit, in an organized fashion for you. You can choose your medical network, and the, these are the initial available partners that Apple started, but now it's all of these that I showed you on the phone since January. So they're coming, we're gonna be able to get it. Uh, one thing that those of us in healthcare have always realized, and you have too, if you've been in the hospital, you've wondered, why in the heck is nobody coming here to take care of me? I push that button on the requesting attendance, and nobody's been here for 20 minutes. And yet you go out there, and everybody's out there <coughs> entering in the medical record. So here it is. I just need you to make up, I just need you to make notes of the chart so I know the patient is breathing and okay instead of looking at the patient itself. So we have a tough time with the medical records in healthcare. Well, everybody, they showed me everything except how to go from one slide to the next. It's very challenging for us to. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but I don't know how to move this. Just touch I the guess one that's why Jeff has got that little portable. You should be able to just slide it with your uh, finger. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Do you see the one that's highlighted in blue? Yeah. It's the one underneath it that's next. I, I understand that. Did you touch but, that one? But I don't have that on the screen. What I have is that plus my notes and, and a, a way to get to the next. Here we go. Down. Uh, medical records are required. Uh, all, all, all people uh, treating or seeing patients have to have them. They're privileged, as we've said, they're privileged communication. They have to be private. And they can be maintained for the patient, uh, maintaining their health data. Uh, it's lifelong, and it's a basis of managing their care, background information in the event of a lawsuit, and clinical data. People can access your health care data uh, for research, for education, uh, for an appropriate reason. So it's available for that. Medical records can be kept on paper or on the computer. 
but they belong to the facility. So the medical record belongs to the hospital. However, you own the information that's contained in them. So when Trump's attorneys or whoever it was came to his doctor's office and walked away with Trump's medical records, that was inappropriate. And I don't know how they got away with that. But, um, uh, that's an unsaid statement there. In the records that, that the, they belong to the facility, even though the client owns the information. If the information is on their uh, computer, I can't get to it. So even though it's my information, they control my access to it. So, well, yeah, I don't know in that particular case why they, they don't or can't provide it for you. Well, they can, but well, they're the ones in control. That's the point that I'm making. Even though it is your medical information, you have you are not in control, and mm -hmm. that is the, that is the problem. Okay. But 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 if you go to them, you're saying you can get it. That <clears throat> they just control the access at a certain point. You, you may not be able to get it on your computer. But you make the key statement. They control the access. That's what I'm saying. Right. Right. But they're protecting. Everybody. All right. Looking at the medical records, when I first uh, got out of training, my first job was uh, doing the locums in a, a doctor's office, and here uh, you can see uh, what I found. And that's not legible. Can you read it? It's brief, nope. chaotic, illegible. So <clears throat> this is a uh, more appropriate medical record, although it doesn't say very much. We've got this patient by the name of George Rubin. Uh, he was seen in 1965 with a finger stuck in his ear. He removed the finger from his ear and it was $3.50. Uh, he was seen in 67, painful foot for two weeks. He removed a rock from his shoe, $7.50. Then in 68 he was seen. He wanted penicillin, but he wouldn't tell his story. <laughs> So he got a 600,000 of propane yes. penicillin, I got him 22 bucks. So that's, George, you might have to explain that to us. <laughs> that's not me, I wasn't born in 22. <laughs> when I went to Africa, we improved our medical records. There's a buff adder, uh, snake bite up, Watson had. He's been walking for a couple days to get to us, no systemic symptoms, no dyspnea or palpitations, it's very painful. And he's got the swelling in the chronic area, no pedal pulse, pulses are felt. He does that blanching of the nail beds. And then on the other side, we have got what we did for him. This is abbreviated, of course, but uh, that was his treatment. So medical records are getting more and more complete as we go forward. I think the best medical record I ever made was in the emergency department when we had uh, scribes. Because I would walk in, see a patient, along with my scribe, and I would listen to the history. And uh, while I was doing the physical exam, I was dictating the history to the scribe. And the patient could hear what I was saying. And the patient knew that I heard them understood them, lis listened to them, and if I did make a mistake, they could correct me right there. And then I would dictate the physical very quickly to the scribe, uh, tell the patient what I was going to do for them, and the patient, the, the scribe would write the history, sorry, the, the prescription or whatever else was needed. So when we walked out of the room, the chart was done, the patient was informed, and the, the prescription was written, the chart was complete. Very, very efficient. As long as you had a scribe that wrote legibly. And that was always a problem. But today, now we have input with, uh, this is my uh, internist, and boy, can he pound that portable. That's an Apple uh, portable. 
now all of our input is coming in with a digital device. It may be, uh, as you know, when you're waking up in the hospital in the middle of the night, they're not carrying a chart with a pencil. They take the, the blood pressure and the vitals, and boom, it's just automatically loaded into the chart. Uh, another way of doing this, which is not nearly as good, is many of the urgent care type places, you just have boxes that you tick. Um, Linda came in with a sore throat, and I make the notes. Uh, I just tick the right boxes of what her complaint and physical findings are, and when I'm done, boom, there it is written out in, in sentences, but it always looks the same. And I don't like that because when I see Linda in follow-up, I don't know what really the doctor was thinking about because it always looks the same. But if the doctor has written that out, he's put it in such a way that it makes sense to him. Uh, nowadays also, in many locations, they're dictating these uh, with something like, uh, what's the Dragon program? Dragon Dictator. Dragon Dictator, okay. Yeah. Uh, and apparently they're able to do this now with enough accuracy that the doctors don't have to go back and reread it, which we used to have to do because it was so uh, inaccurate. And this is the output that we now get, uh, three pages of complete uh, history and physical and workup. So vital health care, you're going to see your doctor about 300 times in your lifetime. Hundreds of blood pressure readings, numerous diagnoses, hundreds of diverse entries. Now how in the world can you <coughs> keep your provider up to date on all that information. You know, there's no way that you can do it unless we're using Apple's program. Health Kit is the program that consolidates this information. It's designed to maintain the data from a wide range of sources, automatically merging the data together, and uh, then letting its app perform its merging. Uh, HealthKit also performs a, an app which is called the Health App, which we've looked at. And the Health App is sort of our, uh, the, what do you call it? Your. Well, anyway, it's, it's our access point toward it. Um, it, it, there's another name for it. It makes me think of a car in the front of an automobile. That dash. That's it's your dashboard into this information, which makes it manageable for you to interpret the data that's been provided. So now consumers will have this information uh, from various institutions. Uh, that organized into one view, and if you notice here, there's your allergies, all your uh, medication, your diagnoses, or your immuniz immunizations, and your laboratory work. Um, so you'll have these subtopics, these topics here that uh, will line up below, and I don't know, I haven't seen uh, if it shows all of it or if it just shows the last uh, entry for those items. So <clears throat> Apple says that this will automatically be updated uh, for you. So the first time you go to your portal for your doctor's office or your hospital or your laboratory, you go to the portal and you sign in with your uh, password, and then by default, on a <coughs> basis, this will be re-looked at by HealthKit, downloaded without you having to uh, 
go in and re-enter passwords and such such as that. And you will be notified of any update, but those notifications will not have any of your private data. <coughs> Um, interesting in that <clears throat> this will not be on the iPad and the reason is iPad, Apple's health app leverages the iPhone's embedded uh, chip that uh, monitors the motion and the iPad does not have that so um, there may be other reasons why Apple chose not to make this available on the iPad, but anyway, for this, at this time, it's, uh, it's not going to be there. Health information can be stored in the iCloud. Your health information never goes to Apple's com com computers itself. It is all encrypted before you would choose to store it and it's encrypted on your phone. So nobody has access to it uh, except you. That solves the HIPAA issue. Um, I just mentioned that. But now, this earlier it's really interesting that <clears throat> this motion detector on your iPhone um, collects the sensor data relating to the accelerometers the uh, gyroscopes the compasses to measure your motion and apparently even though you don't have your phone turned on or if your battery is dead if it's still in your pocket it's measuring this and when you um, re-fire up your phone, it will download that data into the health app. So if, as I mentioned, some of you who have not used it before uh, can, can access your past history. Now I guess I can sit in my office at home and I can do this and tell my wife I went, I went on the drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I got a few more steps that way. Now, you are not going to be able, at this point, to send your medical records to your doctor, your new doctor down here, or anybody else. You can, make, you, you can let them look at your phone to see your data, but I am sure that someday, somehow, uh, you're going to be able to share this with your, doc your uh, doctor. But at this point, it's not available. Now, before we go to that, is there any questions or <coughs> any suggestions? Uh, those of you who use the iWatch, help me out. Um, I just wonder if you when my doctor take, makes records of my medical visits, and I decide I don't like that doctor, and I go to the new doctor, does the new doctor automatically get my records from the first doctor? No, no. You have to go to your old doctor, sign a release to get those records, and they will either provide them to you or forward them, whatever you work out. But it's not without you initiating it. Nothing automatic. Now, if they are in the same healthcare network, have the same computer system, they may be able to access that. Without my permission? Yes. Yes. That was my question. If the, like Millennium connects the doctors that work in Millennium, yes. can access the required records, all of them are. I, I think so. Bill, you said you can't send your health records. Can't you take, you know, if the health records are on your screen, you can take a screenshot and send of course. that. Of course, yeah. That would work. Although, 
you're not going to have much record. You, you're going to have a lot of screenshots. Yeah. And when you consider what a health record may entail. That's true. What about scanning it and then putting it in a file? Would that work? You know, like you get your blood test and you put it in a file. Well, you can only display it on this little screen. So even scanning it is going to be. Yeah. I want, I want to share a couple of things here before uh, we leave, and then we'll have some other questions if we have time. You know, people ask me where do you get information on, on the uh, internet. I think one, and, and a couple of the docs are here. They may have ideas themselves to add. I think WebMD is, is pretty good. Um, the other thing I like to use is Mayo Clinic or Cleveland Clinic. Uh, I know then I've gone to a, a responsible, reliable site, and then there's search engines within that where you can look up uh, something if you wish. Uh, NIH uh, has a lot of uh, infectious disease and is issues like that. And then the other thing is, um, Associations and foundations like the American Heart Association, uh, that is going to be valid data. I, I don't have a problem with those kind of associations. <coughs> or, or the Muscular Dystrophy Foundation, you know, they are going to present good information on the phone. I mean, on the, on the, uh, on the computer. But avoiding sites that are selling product. I just think you can be led down the trail uh, very quickly with uh, people that are biased to market some product. And then the last pearl for the day, let me ask you this. If you had a heart attack here in Naples, what hospital would you go to? And I no, the The closest yeah. one. Okay. What about if your spouse was having a stroke? Where would you go? Well, it's interesting. I've been attending Grand Rounds, and um, I don't think it would matter which hospital you went to for your for your uh, heart attack. I, I think either hospital would take excellent care of you, and they both do invasive cardiology, uh, which you may need. But, if you're having a stroke, and a stroke is something that is so debilitating, um, it is something that is, time is of such an essence to uh, prevent any problem, uh, I mean to minimize the problem, that uh, Naples Community Hospital has a couple of physicians that do uh, really amazing invasive uh, intravenous and intra-arterial uh, explorations of the vascular, vasculature of the brain. They'll go up there with a little wire and pull out a clot and stuff. I, I, just, I just want you to appreciate the fact that I, I suppose if you had an acute stroke and went to uh, uh, the other hospital, Physicians, uh, Physicians Regional. Regional. Uh, it's an excellent hospital, been there. But I think that they would send you over to Naples. And that time element is important. So if your spouse was having a, a stroke, take them to NCH or make sure the ambulance is going to do that. Does NCH, when you say NCH, does it matter whether it's north or south? I don't know, George. I, th I, would, I think I'd err to downtown. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Carl? If you call an ambulance, can you tell them specifically which hospital will take them? Yes. yes. You've got your choice. So, like, we have a clinic, the NCH clinic in um, Amakley. Would we have to go there, or could we tell them to go downtown? Downtown. I mean, oh, you mean have your choice, right? Well, you'd have your choice, yes. Mm -hmm. Right, I think. Well, I, I they told us that that new NCH firehouse 
that's a stabilization one. Right. In other words, they would take you in there by ambulance and then transport you where they could right. yeah, the best. But everybody is now aware of the importance of time in a stroke. So if you went to Mockery, they wouldn't waste any time getting you on the road. But I mean, I would, I would just head for just go to the South Virginia. Virginia. I mean, I would head for MCH downtown. Right. Don't waste any time. Right. And, and you, you know, I think with the stroke people, uh, <clears throat> sometimes it's a, a minor or a TIA, transient ischemic attack, and they tend to kind of wait and see what's going to happen, what's happening. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hit on him. Yes. Uh, two points on that. Uh, last time I needed an ambulance, um, they asked me which hospital to take my husband to. And, the, and um, the other thing that you can do is you could, if you have a serious medical condition, is to ask your doctor which they prefer. Because we went to one hospital and uh, it didn't work out well. And as I talked to the doctor's staff, they said, next time this happens, this is where we want you to go. Yeah. So that sometimes, that's a, you know, if you know that you might have to do that, it's a good idea to check with your physician, especially if it's a special issue, and ask them, do you want me to go to North or South or Physicians Regional? What's the best thing to tell the ambulance? They'll take you wherever. Um, good point. Question back here, Yes. Can you tell me what the symptoms are of stroke? I don't know. Okay. Stroke, uh, weakness, uh, difficulty speaking, uh, inability to stand up. I mean, that's a minor stroke to fully being unconscious, unresponsive. Uh, the um, signs and symptoms in women have not been given enough research in the last, since, you know, the history of medical research. So um, NIH now has an Office of Research on Women's Health, and it's still being studied. Even the invasive test, or the, the, um, the detection tests can differ in women. And I couldn't label them all. I mean, I'm not a physician, I'm a nurse, but um, I would recommend going to the Office of Women's Research, or, Women's Office of Research on Women's Health under the NIH. Okay. Well, I think our time time up. Uh, any other? Uh, we still have a few minutes. Okay. Any other questions? Do the uh, other medical people have any suggestions yeah. or anything? I just had one question. I know it's mm -hmm. probably obvious that Apple doesn't sell any of the data. But, um, you know, with all the attention that's been given to Facebook, Google, and Twitter. So you're saying that all of these other medical apps, there are no third parties that look at any of that information? I mean, I, I know it's on paranoid, but, you know, you would think that it's a little big brother where all of your information is being tracked so yeah. much that you wonder would that ever get you know, sold somehow to insurance companies or right. whatever. You know, uh, a very good question, but we all have to be cautious with that. I, I would look at that other program and see if it is just a collection, collecting data, and maybe look at their, their uh, <coughs> what do you call the, uh, the notes that they send and have you sign, but they have to present what they do with your information. Privacy statement. Privacy statement, yeah. And, and make sure, but uh, as I see that, you're going to have this pot here that's just collecting data, which is the health kit, and these other things that feed into it, uh, some of it is just inert recording, that wouldn't be any problem, <coughs> but you'd have to sort that out. Well, you know, people could say, well, employers might want to start collecting information on how well people are abiding by their wellness standards. You know, yeah. But. You know, I think this is really going to be nice when it reaches some maturity for the snowbirds who go back and forth, you know, be able to keep 
north and south doctors up to date and uh, have the peace of mind that when you're traveling, you've got it all right there. I, I mean, I've got my medicines listed in there and my history. And when I go in and they ask me these questions again, gosh, I just, even though I could probably write them all down, I just pull them out because it's easy to overlook something. Mm -hmm. I think paramedics, though, also have the information. If you've been in the hospital within the last two years, they can access it right in the ambulance. Maybe. Billy, Billy just two comments. Uh, for a number of years now, I've been asking my providers for copies of my test results, MRIs, x-rays. Their obligation is to give you those things when you have those tests. They give them to you on a DVD, and if you go for an MRI, very common, I do it all the time, my yep. wife does it all the time, we say, you want a copy of those test results? Oh, you'll get a copy of the report. No, 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 I want a copy of the test results. I want the MRIs or the CAT scans or the x-rays. And they give them to you on a disc. Sounds ridiculous, but I now have a little collection of the last five or six years of all my back surgeries and right. things. That's kind of one. The other, and, and they have to give them to you. You know, you just ask for it, and they'll look at you with consternation, and you say, yes, that's what I want. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> You're having a stroke. I thought I'd catch too that they were very willing to give me the disc. The problem is, I don't have the application program to read the disc. It doesn't matter. The doctor does. I know, but if I wanted to look at my record... No, you can't. I can't. And, and most of it's... Uh, you know, I mean, you'd have to pay a fortune probably to get the application. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll review yeah. that. Yeah. Well, well, my copies. I'm trying. I mean, right. Just with due respect, with all my copies of my X-rays and things, there's a thing called the reader, and it's usually an MS DOS or, or Windows uh, program, not MS DOS. Sorry. Um, uh, there's usually a Windows reader that lets you look at your films and look at your X-rays or whatever. It's usually there. Well, I know. I know it works for X-rays. I don't know for sure about the MRI. Work for my MRIs and CAT scans. Uh, so everybody in the room has to go out and buy a PC? I think the laboratories now for your lab work, uh, at least the one I use, um, has a portal where I have access to it. And so I can access today's as well as two years ago lab work on me. And, and that's kind of nice to be able to monitor. So, I mean, it's still with the Apple app, you have to have one ID. You can't, it won't give you more than you can't enter wife and husband. Right. So if you, you just got to have one phone that I have, one that she has, even though we share an Apple ID, it, it won't function. You know, I was wondering about that the other day. Can you change the Apple ID temporarily in your phone to access independently that information? In other words, you would each have one, so you could download respectively the information to your phone. It's there. Then you just change your Apple ID back to the one you share for your purchases. The bracelet that patients wear in the hospital, and when the nurses come and just flash mm -hmm. by and scan a barcode, they're getting the patient's full information, right? Can you envision Apple doing that? I mean, you're not saying it's already on the watch. So that if you're unconscious, a paramedic could come and just scan your barcode on your bracelet and then get all your information, rather than having to go to the phone. We're going to put a chip in your phone. Right. So <laughs> It'd be much more accessible than trying to go to the phone. Yeah. Right on the I would, uh, I would trust uh, Apple's uh, uh, medical records security, uh, security better than uh, because uh, I would say at least two medical companies that own uh, uh, doctors' uh, practices have uh, have been compromised by hackers. So our information was hacked through the doctors' companies, especially the big companies, 
and not through our phones or our watches. You know, I mean, to be fearful about what Apple is doing to me is less fearful <coughs> than I am of the these big companies that own doctors' practices and get hacked. Yeah, they don't yeah. have the security. I don't know if that was Steve Jobs or, or who initiated the, the really tight appreciation for security, but it served Apple well and served us well. Yeah, I'm not saying it wouldn't happen, but compared to where we have been hacked, you know, it's there's nothing you can do about it. You go to this doctor, or they're in this practice, this practice is owned by some company that let out that information. And Sometimes they even had stuff laying by dumpsters, medical records. That yes, yeah. yes sir. Yeah. There was a uh, question or a mention about getting blood sugar through your skin, which probably won't happen. But earlier this year, I had uh, most of my pancreas removed. It turned me into a pretty significant diabetic. And I have a little thing right here. In the future. That I change about every week, and every five minutes I get a new reading on this, and they can, if you don't, uh, they won't allow it to go to a, a smartphone because of some questions about privacy, but this comes along with it. I, my blood sugar right now is 94. So, so, but, I keep, uh, and I can check it uh, against my uh, finger stick thing too to make sure it's staying accurate. Mm -hmm. So does that, that is subcutaneous? It's a subcutaneous yes. wire that goes in. Okay. So it hurts wire. about as much as a finger stick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, thank you, that's very interesting. It, but it's, anyway, this is, uh, has to be uh, hooked. In other words, you have to cut put in your finger stick reading on here twice a day to make sure it's staying good. But this is version five. Version six is coming out in December where you won't have to do that. Does that record linearly? I get a little chart here that I can look at and it just little dots every five minutes is a new dot. Okay. If there's a How far back, back does that go? Hmm? How far back does that go? Not much at all. Okay. You know, regarding blood pressure, for an example, you come into the doctor's office and you've been run over almost by a car on the highway and you had three cups of coffee that morning and, and your kid's upset with you and, you know, so you wonder what in the world is blood pressure is high? Why is it high? And so we make determinations based on that one intervention where if we would monitor this every day, and have it linearly uh, recorded, we'd walk in and, and show the doctor, this is what my blood pressure's doing. That's so much more meaningful for treating. The cardiologist has him do it. Yeah, we try it in the morning, morning and then right the, before he goes to bed. Are you keeping it on your iPhone? No, no just but you could. <laughs> yes? With respect to the question about early signs of strokes, there's an acronym fast, facial weakness, weakness in the arm, or speech difficulties. The T is to move quickly. Uh, as I recall, intervention is most successful if, if uh, initiated within 60 minutes of early signs of stroke. Thank you. Right. Anything else? I'm surprised we didn't hear from you watch users regarding data input or you know, what kind of data are you recording on your on these watches? You well, see they tell you you need to stand up now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time. Yeah. yeah, they really do. They tell. They also tell you when to deep breathe, and there's a few other things they tell you with, without even asking. And we're not taking advantage of all the uh, tools that are. Yeah. available to us on our watches. Yeah. Did you have a question? I didn't have a question. I have an Apple Watch. Uh, last year I became AFib. I had something I became AFib. And I bought some kind of program, cardio something that ran on the Apple. I put two fingers on it and it uh, took care of my heartbeat. 
Uh, then I found this little program, Little Heart, and it's right on my watch, and it's right now in 58 beats per minute. Uh, a week ago, Sunday, a couple weeks ago, Sunday, I was feeling kind of funny, so I just looked on there and I was 160. 160. Oh my gosh. 130, 160, 80, like that. All because of my watch, I knew, man, I better do something about it. So I went in and just shut the room down, just became quiet, and it, now I'm back to normal. But that's from the watch, and it just sits right on my arm all the time. It's real simple. We're just scratching the surface. Oh, it's just beginning, yeah. See you gotta go in a different room than your wife. <laughs> that, that makes it a lot easier. Uh, I think I want to add, because there have been recent conversations about, you know, the how they say your blood pressure can go up because you go in a doctor's office. But they're also finding out that can be significant. Because if you're the type of person that wires up and this happens, then you're putting in a different situation right. that could happen again. It may happen every good. day. Huh, yeah. It may happen every day. Right. But you know, they, they, uh, the last time, about two times ago, when I went to the vet, they started up on me about taking the dog's blood pressure. I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you can never the dog. It's like, <laughs> They said, well, we have a certain amount that we, you know, <coughs> take the number down based on. <laughs> All right. Well, thank All right. You. Well, thank you.